All right, my BC kids, this is section 7-9 on logistic models, and it has a lot to do with populations and population growth. They seem to be the most applicable things involving logistic models. So uh, logistic population growth is when the growth rate increases quickly at first, but then slows as population reaches the carrying capacity. So here's the, the idea. Um, here at my house, we have a fish pond, and there's <laughs> fake koi. <laughs> We were told they were koi, but they really aren't koi. But anyway, there's koi in our, semi-koi in our fish pond. Um, if our fish pond is, I don't know, uh, six by eight feet, something like that, um, at some point, is there going to, are there going to be fish that will outgrow that area? Like, will I end up having at some point too many fish where I'm going to have to take fish out and put them in another fish pond? And the answer is no, because there's a carrying capacity, and most times populations, whether they be fish or um, deer or whatever it is, most times they end up having a population that kind of levels off at some point. At some point, they meet their maximum capacity and then they, the population just stops growing like that um, in a case like this. So population growth, there's a carrying, what's called a carrying capacity. And the carrying capacity is this line right here. And I'm going to call it a few different things. See that line? Sometimes it's called a carrying capacity. How much can that environment carry? How many fish, whatever, can that environment carry? So carrying capacity is one way that you might see this worded. Another word they, or set of words they might use is the limiting value. They mean the same thing, it's just different words, limiting value. And some of you, because I know you're brilliant, might think, well, geez, all that is really is my horizontal asymptote, right? All that is is the horizontal asymptote, and that's all correct. They are all true. So this line that we're talking about takes the population over time and it's called your limiting value. In the equations we're going to use, you'll see limiting value uh, used in the equations. But again, it means the same thing as carrying capacity. So if the question asks you what's the carrying capacity, they're really asking you what the limiting value is or what the L value is. So there's some interesting things about this. If I look at this, this is uh, where the growth rate is increasing. I'm going to highlight it. Right, the growth rate is increasing as I come along the curve until I get right about here. Hyler, you can't see very well. Right about until I get to this point right here. And then guess what happens? After that point, the growth rate is decreasing up here. My growth rate is now decreasing. It increases until I get to this coordinate right here. And then it decreases beyond that, the growth rate. See how it slows down? All right. So if I think coordinate wise, this is time. So my X value is a T value. And my Y value, look at the population, it's part way to L, but how far to L is it? And you might notice that it's halfway to L, so it's L over two. That's where it changes. That's where the growth rate changes from increasing to decreasing at T comma L over two. Now, let's go back to thinking uh, second derivatives, right? Second derivatives, if I'm thinking second derivative is concave up, concave down, this is concave up until I get to here, and then it turns concave down for the rest of the graph. Do you remember what it's called when a function goes from concave up to concave down? And hopefully you're thinking it's a point of inflection. where the first derivative, or I'm sorry, the second derivative changes from con concave up to concave down. 
That's my point of inflection. So all of this to be said, here's one more point from our graph here before we get into trying problems, is that the maximum growth rate happens at y equals l over 2. The maximum growth rate is at y equals l over 2. Because that's where it's increasing and then changing to decreasing. All right, so a real world, world application would be with animals and how many the land can support. We talked about that with the fish pond, so same kind of idea. So there's two formulas involved with this. Um, the derivative of a logistic function is typically written in one of the following forms. Uh, they both are equivalent to each other, they're just different forms. All right, so if I look at this, this first one is k, that's the proportionality constant times y, my population, sometimes you'll see that as a p for population, 1 minus y over l, with l being my limiting value. That's one form you'll see it in. Or if you manipulate this act algebraically, you can see it as dy over dt is k over l, times y, or p. I'm talking p because see how my y values are population, p for population. And then parentheses l minus y. In either form, the k and the l are positive constants, and l is the limiting value. All right, so the first questions are not that bad. They're just asking you, here's an equation, what number's the limiting value and what number is the point of inflection, the y value of the point of inflection. So the limiting value, I'm looking at these two equations, I've got to decide, is this the setup for the first equation or is it the setup for the second equation because I need to figure out the L value that goes with it. So I can see that the first one is a whole number times a y not a fraction times a y. So I'm going to be using this first one. So this one, I'm just going to rewrite it so I can have it right in front of my face. dy over dt equals ky 1 minus y over l. So I look at the equation and I've got to search for what's the limiting value. What number is in the l place? Well, l is here in the fraction. 3 is in the denominator here. There it is, 3. And the y value of the point of inflection, well, from up above, the point of inflection, the y value is L divided by 2. So that's simple, simple. That means my y value of the point of inflection for my question is 3 over 2. Done. Number 2. I've got to decide again which equation am I going to use. But see this one? This one's a little different. I have a number times y, so you think it might be this guy. But I don't have a fraction here telling me what... Uh, L is. So I see that this one is really the, the way that I'm sitting. It's L minus Y, number minus Y, so it's really the second equation that I'm going to be using. So this one, again, just to put it in front of me, dy over dt is K over L times Y times L minus Y. I'm searching, searching, what's in the L position? Easiest to get right here. 16 is in the L position, so 16 is my limiting value. The y value of the point of inflection is 16 divided by 2. Great. Okay. That's the first one. Now here's two things you need to be aware of. These are the questions that you would see on an AP exam, uh, for logistics anyway. Either they're asking you for a maximum value or a maximum rate. They're very different things. So a maximum value or a maximum rate. If I'm looking for a maximum value of the logistic function, it's just the L value, the limiting value, or L. That's nice. If they're asking you for the maximum rate, it happens when the second derivative changes from positive to negative, which is L over 2, or um, when the second derivative equals 0, because, right, it's a 
it's a place where it's changing from concave up to concave down. So it's either where the, the limiting value is over 2 or where your second derivative equals 0. All right, there's page 1. Page 1 done. Page 2, number 3. This one says identify the carrying capacity. Well, the carrying capacity is the same thing as the limiting value. What is L? And where is the maximum rate of change? Maximum rate of change is your uh, y value from the point of inflection. So that's going to be L over 2. So it's the same exact question <coughs> that numbers 1 and 2 are asking. They're just asking it in a different way. All right, so again, I've got to decide which formula do I want. This one has the fraction over here. So I'm going to use the one with the fraction in the parentheses. That's my dy over dt equals ky. By the way, Mr. AP assumes that you know these formulas in your head. So us rewriting them all the time is not a bad deal. What's the carrying capacity? Well, that's your L value. And the L value is the denominator of your fraction. So that's 100. And it occurs at 100 divided by 2. So that is 50. Second one, same idea. See how this one has 7 minus y in the parentheses, no fractions involved. This is the other formula. So dy over dt equals uh, 7. I'm sorry, equals k over l. k over l times y. And then l minus y. What's in the l place in the parentheses? It's a 7. 7 over 2. Now, are all the problems going to be that easy? I can tell you absolutely not. Absolutely not. Some of these get really hairy. All right, you can derive a general solution using separation of variables to solve the differential equation. This is like taking the integral if I wanted to know what the original equation was. So they give me dy over dt. That's my first derivative. That's my differential equation. I can take the integral of that and figure out what y equals, and that would be this equation right here. So this is my, uh, my formula when you integrate. Make sense? You're going from a dy over dt to backwards to the uh, original equation. So that's what you get when you integrate. All right, so here's number five. The rate of change, dp over dt, your differential equation, of the number of people entering a state park is modeled by a logistic differential equation. The capacity of the state park is 2,500 people. At a certain time, the number of people in the state park is 1,200 and is increasing at a rate of 100 people per hour. Create a differential equation that could represent this situation. And you say, that's a whole lot of words. What the heck is he asking me for? Well, it's got to be, you've got two choices of the differential equation. So I'm going to put them again over here. Here's your choices. You're going to use either dy over dt equals k times y, parentheses, 1 minus y over l. Or you're going to use dy over dt equals k over l times y, parentheses, l minus y. You're going to use one of those two to create this differential equation. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, we're going to take and use the second one. But we're going to change our y's to p. Remember our y-axis on our original problem here. The y-axis was a population of p. So I'm going to change my y's to p, and I'm actually going to use, I'm going to go through this one with the second equation. So it's going to be dp over dt, which is what they wanted, right? In their thing, they want the change in population over the change in time. So dp over dt, it's going to be k over l times p, parentheses, l minus p. And that's because it's in people. That's what my population is for, uh, for this, my y values. Time is still the x-axis, so that's going to be your x-axis. Let's fill in what we know. Let's see what we, if I can figure out some of these numbers. The capacity of the state park is 2,500. So that's telling me, this guy right here, capacity, that's my L value. 
All right, so let's put that in for the L value. That doesn't change. Remember, that's your horizontal asymptote. That's not changing. That's the cap on your uh, population. So dp over dt equals k over L times 2,500 parentheses L minus 2,500. Whoop, 2,500. And here's what else you know if you keep reading. At a certain time, the, the number of people in the park is 1,200, um, and it's increasing at a rate of 100 people per hour. So what are they telling me? They're telling me that the population, at some point in time, the population is 1,200 when the rate is 100. Now what do we mean by a rate? Rates are rates of change. Rates of change are derivatives. Derivatives are dp's over dt's. So they're telling me in their funny little way that dp over dt is 100. And what we need to do to figure out what the equation is going to be, we can't have an equation with two unknowns, right? Can't have two unknowns. So what I need to do is figure out what k is. That's my job. If I can solve for k, then I'm only going to have one unknown in my problem. So let's see if we can do that. Solve for k. So they told me what dp over dt is, right? They told me that that's 100. My rate, dp over dt is 100. 100 equals k over l, uh, k over, uh, did I put this in wrong? Hang on a second. I did, I put my l's in bad. Oh my goodness, you guys. I put my L's in for my P's. You gonna be alright if I go back and erase? You probably caught that already and you're like, yo, winner. See, when we're not in the classroom, you catch all those things for me. Let me try again. The theory of what I'm talking about isn't, isn't gonna change, but dp over dt, here we go. Let me try this. My P, I have K over 2,500. That's my L. It's K over 2,500. P, that's better parentheses 2500 minus p. I still want to solve for k. And I'm still going to plug in dp over dt being 100 when p is 1200. That's better. k over 2500 times my p of 1200. And that's 2500 minus 1200 in my parentheses. All right, so your job is now to figure out what this is going to turn out to be. So let's see if we can simplify it some. I have 100 on the left. I have 1,200 over 2,500. Well, that's the same thing as 12 over 25, right? Times the 1,300. We can leave it in there for now. It's going to be 1,200 over 2,500 times K times 1,300, 2,500 minus 1,200. So if I do all this, if I do 1,200 times 1,300 divided by 2,500, I actually get 624. You can calculate that and check it out. 624k. So I know that if I want to find k, I can divide. k is going to equal 100 divided by 624, which reduces, reduces, divided by 4s, uh, 25 over 126. And so if I wanted to come up with the differential equation, remember the differential equation was back at this location right here. Let me highlight it. This was my original play. But I have a k and I have a p that's unknown. So if I put in the k value that I now have, it's going to look like this. It's going to be dp over dt equals my k value now, this is kind of goofy. Let me do it this way. 25 this is my k value. 25 over 156, it should be. I think I said it right. 156. 156 times. Now, it's divided by 2,500. So if I were to think of that as timesing, because you don't want a complex fraction in the midst of this, you'd have 25 over 156 over 2,500. That's really nasty. So just do 1 divided by. 2,500, parentheses. 
And then I have, oh, I need a P first, P before parentheses, P. And then I have 2,500 minus P. If I were to multiply, keep the K out in front, remember my, uh, if I keep my K out in front, I end up with, and multiply, forget about the K, this value in front, if I multiply this, 1 over 2,500, into this set of parentheses, the 2,500s will cancel, and I'll end up with a 1, and if I multiply 1 over 2,500 uh, times P, it's going to be P over 2,500. So here's what the final best answer for this is. dP over dT equals the K value we had, 25 over 156, times P, parentheses 1 minus P over 2,500. Yikes. That's the answer. That would be the differential equation, dP over dt, that could represent the situation. Right, so you had to find k first. All right, number six, find the carrying capacity. Well, we know the carrying capacity is going to be based off of one of these two equations over here. <clears throat> and what I need to do, the carrying capacity is L, so they're asking me to find L. It's not in the form that I want it to be. But I can see it's got some fractions involved and such. So if I want to figure out what L is, I'm going to use the, the equation dy over dt, or yeah, dy over dt equals k times y, and then parentheses 1 minus y over L. Again, I could use either one. I'm just picking the one that's easiest, and I'm picking this because see how it's got fractions and that has fractions. So I'm going to see if I can factor this in such a way that I can get out a value so that I can figure out what the L is. So I see this has a Y, I see this has a Y, and I can do some factoring moves to be able to, to play with this thing a little bit. So I'm going to say dy over dt equals, if I factor out a 4 fifths Y, Right? That'll put me in the format that I want it to be, because remember, I want this first term to be a 1. So if I factor out 4 fifths, then I got the 1 that I want, minus. But the question is, what would this be, what would my second part of my parentheses be, that if I take 4 fifths and times it by something, and I'm going to get what this is. I know it, it's going to have a y, right, because it's a y and a y squared. But the question is, what's going to go into the coefficient place? Am I going to have still 1 over 500? And the answer is no. I need to know what 4 fifths times something gives me 1 over 5, 150. 1 over 150. So I've got to calculate that out. I've got to figure out what that is. Or in other words, I guess another way you could look at it uh, is as I'm going to go up above, what is <clears throat> one, fifth, 1 over 150 divided by 4 fifths or times 5 fourths? And so if I do that, then I can see the 5 and the 150, they cancel to 30 and 1, and 30 times 4 is 120. And so the answer is 1 over 120. That's what goes in here, 1 over 120. Now let me write that so you can see it better. So I'm saying that my differential equation, therefore, is dy over dt equals 4 fifths y times 1 minus 1 over 120y. And then I can answer the question as to what is my limiting value? And so my limiting value is going to be 120, the number that's in that place. So L equals 120. Okay. Um, practice problems is next. You got all the lesson problems there? 
the practice problems, this number one is not so bad, but number two is a doozy. Let's leave, um, I'm looking to see which ones I chose. Uh, number one. <clears throat> in this problem, I've got problems in this set are similar to what you would see on the AP exam. You're not going to have any test prep questions. Although, trust me, there's still multiple choice ones and such that act like test prep questions. So, although they're not labeled as such, they're still treated kind of like the same. So, uh, population Y changes at a rate modeled by this differential equation, where T is measured in years. Where are, are, what are all the values for Y for which the population is increasing at a decreasing rate? Now, increasing, go back to basic uh, derivatives, you know a function is increasing when the first derivative is positive. And you know it has a decreasing rate, a decreasing rate when the second derivative is less than zero. It's the rate of the first derivative, so a decreasing rate. All right, well, in order to do that, you're going to take the first derivative, you're going to set it equal to zero. And you're going to see um, when that value equals zero, when the, for what the first derivative is and what the second derivative is. You're going to have to compare signs. It's almost like making a sign chart. You're going to make a sign chart out of this. You want to know what the first derivative is doing. You want to know what the second derivative is doing. And you want the part of the sign chart that incorporates a positive first derivative and a negative second derivative. And so we're going to go through and find both of those derivatives. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to take my differential equation. I'm going to multiply it through so that I can better take a second derivative. So if I have 0.3y times 4,000, I have 1,200y. And if I have uh, 0.3y times a negative y, I've got a negative uh, 0.3y squared. You hear Levi in the background? He's barking at somebody. Well, there's my first derivative, right? This is my y prime. If I take my second derivative, I'm going to call it y double prime, my second derivative, that's going to be 1200 minus 2 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.6y. And what I want to know is when they when that equals 0, right? When when the, what is the zero place for this? So if I take let's go with the the second derivative here. My second derivative, if I set that equal to 0 since it's the easy the one that's right here with me, 1200 minus 0.6y. Um, I bring the 0.6 over, 0.6y equals 1200. 0.6y equals 1200. And then I divide it and I get y equals 2000. So I'm going to go to my, uh, I also want to know where my first derivative, y prime, equals 0. So if I do that, I have 1200y minus 0.3y squared equals 0. This point three, I normally have this done ahead of time, but I didn't find a first derivative when I did the problem. See if I can do that fast. Um, 1200 divided by 0.3 gives me 4000. There we go. So if I do 4000, this one is going to be 0.3y taken out gives me 4000 minus y. So I get, yep, so I get y equals 0 and y equals 4000. All right, so here comes my sign chart. I start at zero. T is measured in years, can't have negative years. The maximum that this thing is going to go to is this 4,000, right? Also, you know that because your limited capacity is 4,000. So you've got this 4,000 going on here that's your limiting capacity. All right, so 2,000 is in the middle. I'm going to do, let me do different colors here. I'm going to do my y prime up top. 
I'm going to do my Y double prime down the bottom. All I want to know is positive, negative. So let's go for first derivatives in here. If I take um, a value like 1,000, you could even just do it right into, into this. 1,000 times 0 0.3, 4,000 minus 1,000 is 3,000. That's going to give me a positive outcome. Now what do you think this other one's, if I put 3,000 in, what do you think is going to happen? Hopefully you're looking at this saying, well, it's going to still be positive because if I go to, um, it doesn't change signs again until 4,000. It could change signs after 4,000. But for right now, it should still stay positive. But say you don't remember that. Um, put 3,000 in, 3,000, 3,000 gives me still a positive over here. So both ends give me positives for first derivatives. If I go to my second derivative, well, my second derivative is one of these formats here. So if I put in a 1,000, 1,200 minus 0 0.6 times, that's uh, 0.6 times 1,000 is 600. So that's still going to be positive. But if I go to my 3,000 number, 3 times 6 is 18, so it's going to be 1,800. That's going to be a negative. And so do I have the information that I need to talk about where I've got a positive first derivative and a negative second derivative? And the answer is correct right here. It's going to be this section of the graph. So I know that that would be between 2,000 and 4,000. That's going to be my answer to the question. What are the values of y for which the population is increasing at a decreasing rate? And that's your story. So first derivative, second derivatives to be able to calculate that out. All right, if I go to number two, this one is doozy. I'm sorry, this is kind of a long video. Hopefully you're hanging in there, hang in there. A rumor. We don't ever have rumors at Gateway, do we? A rumor spreads through the community at a rate of dy over dt equals 2y times 0.7 minus y, where y is the proportion of the population that's heard the rumor at time t. What, pop what proportion of the population has heard the rumor when it's spreading the fastest? So spreading the fastest is... Um, we talked about that on the very first page. It's that um, limiting value. It's going to be L over 2. Or it could be when you've got a first derivative, y prime is the maximum. Uh, or it could be when y double prime, second derivative, changes signs. Remember the concavity thing, concavity thing that we talked about? Changes signs. So all of those are what you're looking for for this particular problem where it's spreading the fastest. So let's look at it. If I can figure out, let's try this one for where the maximum is. Or is it set up? There's a couple different ways. Let me take you through, let me take you through since I started it that way, where the maximum is, where the y prime is max. All right, so let's foil this out. You've got a dy over dt equals 2 times 0.7 is 1.4y minus uh, 2 times y is 2y squared. All right, I set that equal to 0. I've got 1.4y minus 2y squared. I'm going to factor out... Um, actually, there's a couple different ways. If I factor out a... Um, 2. I did this, well, you know when I did this, I actually took it and did it with uh, where y double prime changes signs because it's easier to solve. Because look at the, if I go this way, the way I was starting to go with this, it's not wrong. I can factor things out and then, but see with the decimal point there, it just makes it a little more complicated. So let me go for the second derivative. Let me go for y double prime and see where it changes signs. So y double prime would be 1.4 minus 4y. See how much easier that equation is to set equal to 0? So I've got 1.4 e uh, minus 4y. Minus 4y. If I swing the 4y over, 4y equals 1.4, so y is 0.7.
I'm sorry, y is 0 0.35. 0 0.35. That's the value, this 0.35, where you're spreading the fastest because that would be that, that y value that corresponds to that concavity change. So we're going to say y equals 0.35. But here's my question for you. My question for you is, could I have gotten that right from the original equation instead of doing all this work to get there? And hopefully your answer is, mm, yeah. Because look at the value, if I look at my value that's here uh, for this guy, this 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is in the L location, right? That 0 0.7 is in the L location if I go back and look what the formulas are. So really, I could have said that L equals 0 0.7 over 2, right? 0.7 over 2, and that would give you the same 0.35 value. So all that work we did, you didn't necessarily have to do if you remember the formula. I just wanted to show you both ways uh, for this thing, so either way. So part B goes, all right, well now if at t equals 0, 20% of the population have heard the rumor, find y as a function of t. In other words, they want you to come up with what the equation is for y. Find y. And all of this depends on this dy over dt deal. They're giving you the first derivative. You have to go backwards and figure out what y is. So in order for you to do that, you're going to have to integrate. So that's what I'm seeing as the big picture for this next question. They're giving you the rate of change. They want you to go backwards and figure out what y is, so you're going to have to integrate to get there. So I'm taking my differential. This is going to be a whole lot of work. Notice they gave you some space for this. They, you, you need it. <laughs> dy over dt equals 2y, this is the original equation, parentheses, 0.7 minus y. Well, it's separation of variables. I need to get the y's on one side and everything else on the other. So the only thing that really has to move is the 2. So if I look at this, I want to have 2. Now this is a little bit complicated. Let me see if I can make it any easier. I'm going to multiply both sides by dt. If I multiply both sides by dt, it's going to be dy equals 2, I'm sorry, Levi just came running in as if something, my dog, just came running in as if there was some big issue, but he laid down. All right, 0.7 minus y and then times dy. <clears throat> so see how I have, um, I'm sorry, times dt. 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 That's now how, not how I want it. I want the dy on the right, and I need the dt on the left. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to, I'm going to divide by, leave the two where it is, but I'm going to take everybody else. I'm going to take these guys. And I'm going to have to divide by them to get them to the other side. So it's going to be dy over y, parentheses, 0.7 minus y equals a 2 dt. And I'm going to rewrite it one more time because we're going to have to integrate. So we've got to think of all those integration rules that we learned and which one applies to this particular situation. And you'll see why this is a BC question in just a second here. I have 1 over, in order to put this in the right order, it's going to be 1 over y parentheses 0.7 minus y dy equals a 2 dt. So I'm looking at separation of variables with this thing, and that's where I end up. And then I'm ready to integrate. Y's are on one side, everybody else is on the other. So here comes now my thoughts for integration. Integrate this side, integrate that side. Well, I'm looking at my, <clears throat> my fraction there. And see how it's a factor type thing? I've got two pieces. This one, hopefully it's ringing a bell to you. This one I have to integrate by partial fractions. 
And you say, well, that's ugly, but that's okay because I kind of like partial fractions. So you're going to have to say then that if I integrate this side, it's going to be a over y plus b over 0.7 minus y equals my numerator of 1. Or a times 0.7 minus y plus by equals 1. And then you do your ifs. I don't know how to on my screen here. If y equals 0.7, I'm going to figure that out. And if y equals 0 is my second part. So let's see, 0.7 is going to zero out the a. I'll have 0.7b equals 1. Now think of this as, a, to put this, you can't put decimals in fractions. So 0.7 is like 7 tenths, right? 7 tenths. So if I multiply both sides, or divide, actually divide both sides by 7 tenths, it's going to be 10 sevenths. So my b equals 10 over 7. 7 tenths. So I've got to divide both sides by 7 tenths. It means I'm multiplying by 10 sevenths. 1 times 10 sevenths is 10 sevenths. If I come over here and let y equal 0, then it zeroes out my b, and I have 0.7a equals 1. Same thing goes. When I divide by 7 tenths, I'm divide, dividing by 7 tenths, multiplying by 10 sevenths, I get 10 sevenths. And so I need to then put this together and see what it comes up to be as far as my uh, fractions would be. If I put it together, it's going to be 10 sevenths. This part of it, anyway, is going to be 10 sevenths, the ln, a went with y, so L on a y, plus 10 sevenths the ln of uh, the b, 0.7 minus y. However, don't forget, and we forget this all the time, that this guy has a negative y, so I have to divide by a negative 1, which is going to make that fraction negative. Right, because it's a minus a y, so the y value, when I take that, I've got to divide by that 1. So let's go back and see if we can put this all together. So I have on the left here, I'm back to my integration problem over here. I have this. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. I have 10 sevenths. Can you still see me? Yeah. 10 sevenths, ln of y, minus, because of the divided by 1, 10 sevenths, ln of 0.7 minus y equals, all right, that's this side, equals this side, and this side is 2. The integral of a 2 is 2x. In our case, it's a t. So 2t. I am unbounded, so I'm an indefinite integral, so I need to do my plus c. Shoo. Now, ultimately, I need to solve for y. That's what I'm trying to get to. Remember, find y as a function. We need the function y. So we're going to have to play some games with this thing, algebra games and such, logarithm rules and all that loveliness to be able to come up with a y equals equation. So let's see if we can do some, some magic on this thing. The first thing I see is that I've got two logarithms and they're being subtracted. Well, we know subtraction with logarithms means divide. So maybe I can put this as, combine them together, and put them as a 10 sevenths ln of them being divided. It's kind of like factoring out the 10 sevenths and dividing these two things. So it would be y over 0.7 minus y. equals 2t plus c. Well, that's getting better. At least the y's are combined. Is there something I can do with this 10 sevenths to get that out of the way? 
because remember I'm trying to get at the Y, so I want the Y piece to be as simplified as it can. The 10 sevenths floating out in front doesn't do me any favors, but what I can do to move it is multiply both sides by 7 over 10. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to multiply this side by 7 over 10. Well that's cool because that'll get rid of it. So then I'm going to be at ln of y over 0.7 minus y equals, because the 10 sevenths and 7 tenths have canceled each other out. On this side I have 14 tenths. 14 tenths would be like 7 fifths. Now do I have to make this 7 tenths c? Do I have to take that 7 tenths and put it with the c? And I know your answer is going to say, nope, you don't, because c is just a constant anyway. It doesn't matter whether the constant is 3 or whether the constant is 17 fourths, whatever it might be, it just is a constant, some constant. <laughs> oh, there goes Levi. All right, so I finally have this down where the, where the um, it's simplified as best as I can do on this. So what I've got to do next is change it. Anytime I try to solve a logarithmic equation, I've got to change it to an exponent. If it were an exponential equation, I'd change it to a uh, logarithm. In this case, there's an invisible e, ln, right there. And remember the loop? Whoop. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the loop-de-loop -loop with this thing. So I'm going to end up with e to the 7 fifths t, oh, I forgot my plus c, plus c equals y over 0.7 minus y. Got it? Got the loop? All right, we've seen this before where if I'm adding these exponents, it would be like they were separate pieces. So let me kind of come over here and show you what I'm talking about here. This little thing, I'm talking about this part right here, he would be like e to the 7 fifths t uh, times, because you're adding the exponents, e to the c. Well, e to the c is just a constant. So the left-hand side becomes c e to the 7 fifths t. You've seen that in other sections. That's not anything new to you. Equals y over 0.7 minus y. All right, so if I look at this and go to, um, let me see if they said this. I think they said this back in one of these pages here. You are looking, well, we'll hold it. We'll hold it there for a minute. Okay, so here's where I'm at with this thing. That's really the best that I can do with this up to this point. Um, I guess there's a couple different things that I could do, but let me go back to, they gave us an if, remember um, with particular solutions. When we did particular solutions, they gave us enough information to figure out what my C is. That's going to be the next job. Let's gonna, we're going to write myself a note here that I'm trying to find C. If I can figure out what that C value is. All right, so that's what I'm going to look at here. So they gave me a t equals 0. When t equals 0, 20% of the people have heard the rumor. Well, 20% represents the um, what the y value is. So when t equals 0, y is 0.2. That's how many people have heard it. So we're going to go through and see if we can figure then what is the c value. All right, well, I would have then, looking at my y values, it's going to be, well, maybe I'll keep with green. It's going to be c e, c e to the 7 fifths times 0, right, t is 0, equals y 0.2 over 0.7 minus 0.2, which is 0.5. And from that information, I actually can figure out what C is. E to any zero power is going to be uh, 1. 
So this is just a C on the left, C equals, and 0.2 divided by 0.5 is really the same thing as 2 fifths. All right, so we're, we're growing closer to the answer because remember I'm back to, this is my, this guy right here. This is what I've got it simplified to at the moment. C e to the 7 fifths t over y minus 0.7 minus y. And so I'm going to carry that on. I guess I don't need this anymore, so I can take that away. Running out of room. All right, so now I'm at next best answer. C is 2 fifths. I'll go back to purple, purple, because I'm back to the real thing. Do you see how many avenues you have to go down for this one? This one's crazy. Two fifths e to the seven fifths t equals y over 0.7 minus y. All right. I still don't have it where I need to have it. Remember, I'm trying to get it into a y equals. And I still have all these, this uh, a y equals situation that I'm trying to go to. So the first thing that I see I can do is get rid of the 2 fifths. So if I take both sides and I multiply both sides by 5 over 2, uh, 5 over 2. That'll get me back to the, the e by itself. So my 2 fifths, 5 halves cancel. I get e to the 7 fifths g equals 5 times y is 5y. 2 times 0.7 is 1.4. 2 times y is 2y. That seems so easy compared to everything we've been doing in this crazy problem. All right, now. The only way I can get the y's together is if I kind of cross multiply at this point. So put this over 1, right? Put that over 1. Cross multiply, I have 1.4e to the 7 fifths t minus 2e to the 7 fifths t equals 5y. I think I lost a y in there, did I? Uh, two, this one has e to the fourth with a y. Let me put the squeeze a y in there. So I've got y's on either side of the equal sign, and I don't want that. I want the y's together. So I'm going to put the y's together. I'm just going to rearrange things. I'm not going to do any crazy math. I'm going to take the 1.4e to the 7 fifths t, leave it where it is, and I'm going to take this 2yE to the 7 fifths t and put it on the other side. So it's 5y plus plus. 2y e to the 5 uh, 7 fifths 7 fifths t. I'm trying to solve for y. I've got all my y pieces on the same side. I can factor it out. So I have a 1.4 e to the 7 fifths t equals y factored out 5 plus 2 e to the 7 fifths t. We are almost there, my friends. I can't believe it. So I end up with y equals. I've got to divide by that group to be able to get what y equals. y equals 1.4e to the 7 fifths t over 5 plus 2e to the 7 fifths t. And that is the answer. And you say, holy moly. Yeah, that's the one. All right, <laughs> 2C, are we like an hour into this video? I don't know, we, I feel like I've been talking math with you for quite a while. All right, at what time T is the rumor spreading the fastest and they don't want you to use a calculator? This, by the way, you can tell, this is tip, a typical um, AP exam question where it takes you, it, there's a lot of, of calculus involved in something like this. So let's see, what time is the rumor spreading the fastest? No calculator. So the fastest, I want to take this thing and they, you're going to use the answer that you've got. So 
Uh, we know that the, it's the maximum from part A. was when y equals 0.35, right? So spreading the fastest, we know that our y value is 0.35. And we know that from part B, we have an equation that was, uh, we used to see. You could use a k, they use a k, whatever. k or c are interchangeable. k e to the 7 fifths t equals y over 0.7 minus y, part b. We also know that uh, k equals 2 fifths, or c, c equals 2 fifths. So if I put that all together into my equation, there's several things that we know. We know that uh, y is 0.35, we know our c is 2 fifths from work that we did previously. And so I can just plug those things in. Direct substitution. 2 fifths e to the 7 fifths t equals 0.35 over 0.7 minus 0.35. Or 2 fifths, can you still see me? No, there you go. 2 fifths um, e to the 7 fifths t equals 0.35 over 0.7 minus 0.35. Well, 0.35 over 0.35 is 1. And you say, finally, there's something that's somewhat easy in this problem. All right, I want to try to solve for t. Now, t's up in the exponent. So let's do one thing at a time. Let's get the e by itself. Well, e by itself means I'm multiplying by 5 over 2. That's going to give me e to the 7 fifths t equals 5 over 2. Now remember, that logarithm's exponents, if I've got an exponent and I want to solve for that variable in the, in the uh, power, I've got to bring the power down. And the only way I can do that is through logs. So it's going to be 7 fifths, I've got to take the ln of both sides, 7 fifths t times the ln of e equals the ln of 5 over 2. ln of e is 1. So I have 7 fifths t equals the ln of 5 over 2. And I want to know what t is. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 over 7. So I end up with t equals 5 over 7 times the ln of 5 over 2. And there it is done without a calculator. I thought that problem was crazy. You might too. All right, I promise the rest of these will be pretty quick. Next one I want to do is number five. The size of the rabbit population is modeled by this function um, to the dif logistic differential equation. Here it is, where t is measured in years for t is greater than zero. Again, it, you know, obviously it has to be because time can't be negative. Initial population satisfies the fact that r of zero is zero. Which of the following could be true? Number one. The limit as you go to infinity is greater than a thousand. Now, what is the limiting value for this? Can you tell what it would be? You might need to play with it a little bit, right? You might need to play with it and figure out to put it in the right form. Uh, this one is dr, they're calling it over dt. I'm looking at my fraction here. If I factor it out, a one-third, a one-third and an r, to put it in the right format, remember those original questions, it's going to be one minus, factor out an r, that gives me an r, factor out a three, that gives me an 800. So this is going to be r over 800. Now why on earth would I do that? And the question is, the answer is because right here, that tells me what l is. Right, L is 800. So if I know that L is 800, then I can answer the rest of the question for this. So the first one, it says uh, the limiting value is greater than 1,000. No, the limiting value is 800. Right? Uh, they also 
gave the format for like a horizontal asymptote. What's it doing as you go really far to the right when you go to infinity? Same idea as what's the horizontal asymptote? What's the limiting value? What's the carrying capacity? They're all one and the same. So it's 800, that doesn't work. So this guy's a no. Nope. Which of the following could be true? The graph of R has a point of inflection that's greater than zero. Well, where's the point of inflection? The point of inflection happens at L over two. Oh, not four over two, L over two. L over two. Well, L over two is gonna be 800 over two or 400. Is that value greater than zero? And we say, yep, that's good. So this one's yes. The maximum rate of change occurs at T equals zero. So in other words, maximum rate of change, is there a second derivative? The maximum rate of change happens when uh, y prime equals zero and there's a change of signs. Could that happen at t equals zero? And the answer is it could. It could happen. We don't know what that actual value would be, but could it happen there? And we say yes. And so this one's also a yes. So your answer is D, definitely difficult for this section. All right, next one that I wanna do is number eight. Number eight, there it is. Ooh. I'm trying to make sure that I give you examples of all the things you might come across as you're trying to do the rest of the problems. Uh, number eight says, the rate of change dp over t, dt of the number of people entering an arena is modeled by the uh, just a logistic differential equation. The capacity of the arena is 5,000 people. At a certain time, the number of people in the arena is 1,000, and it's increasing at a rate of 500 people per minute. Which of the following differential equations could describe the situation? Well, there's some information they gave you. They told you that the limiting capacity is 5,000. They told you that the population is 1,000, when the rate, dp over dt, is 500. Now we saw a question kind of like this earlier. We're gonna to try to set up the differential equation and figure out which one it fits. So, looking at this. Um, also, I can tell you looking at, like, look at these choices. None of them are really pretty readily, like, you can automatically just say, oh, oh you know, this is it or this isn't it. So we got to do some more work to get there. So we're going to think of our two choices of differential equations that we can use. We're going to use this guy, k over l times p. Um, actually, we know what l is. So k over 5,000, so I don't have to rewrite this all the time. k over 5,000 times p, and then it's 5,000 minus p. Then I'm gonna put in what I know, the when thing. So P is 1,000, DP over DT is 500. Here I go, 500 equals K over 5,000 times 1,000 times 5,000 minus 1,000. And you finally say, this is like easy math compared to where we just were, right? So I'm looking at this. I have 1,000 over 5,000, that's 1 fifth. This is 4,000. Let me see if I can narrow this down again. 500 equals 1 fifth K times 4,000. Or, let's see, 1 fifth of 4,000 is 800. And so this would be 500 equals 800K. Can you still see me? Barely. So K equals divided out 500 divided by 800 is 5 eighths. All right, let's go back and put that in for my K value into my equation. So I'm gonna put K in as 5 eighths. dp over dt equals 5 eighths Divided by 5,000 is times 1 over 5,000. And then I have, oh, P, P. And then 5,000 minus P. So can I now figure out which one it is? 
And so if I look at this, the 5 and the 5,000, they cancel and they become 1 and 1,000. And so I actually have 8,000, 1 over 8,000 P. I'll write it even though you can check your multiple choice answers. Uh, we would have 1 over 8,000 P. I always want to forget that. 5,000 minus P. And do we match? Do we match? Do we match? Please, please, please. And the answer is C. So you see how that 8,000 came about, but it wouldn't have been maybe what you would have thought of when you look at all the information they gave you in the problem. You probably would have been, if you were having to guess a guess, you probably would, would have gone for one of the 5,000 or 500 guys to make that work. All right, cool. Uh, I think there is one last problem, and you're like, no way, when are really one? Let's keep going. Let's do another hour of calculus. So here it is. Which of the following differential equations for a population P could model the logistic growth in the figure? Well, they didn't tell you much, did they? So I'm looking at this and I can see, I can see here if I look at my picture that my limiting value is 400. Well, that's helpful, right? Because if that's helpful, then I know my differential equation would have to have an L of 400 times P times 400 minus P. Right, that would be my setup for this guy. If I were to take and distribute it, because see how this one is not in our parentheses form, it's in a distributed form. So if I distribute this out so I can see who matches that, I would have um, K over 400 P times 400. The 400s would cancel each other out. I get KP. If I take K times P times P, now I have a K over 400 P squared. So I'm looking at my answers, right? I'm checking out these answers. And of my choices, if I look at my answers, I can see what is my K value for every single one. Every single one has the coefficient of P being 0.1. The coefficient of P being 0.1. So let's think about that for a second. If I put in K equals 0.1, what does this then look like? And so let's see. I don't know. Check it out. 0.1 times p minus 0.1 over 400 p squared. So I can automatically eliminate c. c's got a p squared. That's not going to work. That guy doesn't work. But it could be a, b, d, or e. I got to go and figure out what 0.1 divided by 400 is. Is that 0 0.025? Is that 0 0.00? zero. I don't know how many zeros that is. Is that three of them? Uh, two five p squared or is it just a point zero two five? So you got to go to your go to your calculator and calculate it out. Turns out that it will be point one p plus or um, actually minus 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 point zero 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 two five p squared. And so my answer is A. By the way, of course, they gave you the answer D that would be very likely similar, but it's a plus sign instead of a minus sign. And so that, my friends, is logistic growth. It's uh, logistic models. A lot of times, again, it's with populations and things like that. But um, that number two that we did as the practice problem with the, that took forever, that's a classic AP question. You might want to go back and star that to go back and look at um, come April or so when we get closer to the exam. All right. Thanks for all your hard work. You guys are the best. I'll see you in class.